Hello, you guys. Welcome to my channel, Jesus Wants You. Hold on a second. I'm going to try to make sure I got some volume. Um, a lot of people say sometimes my volume is low. Um, so I wanted to make sure it was up to par. Listen, I don't even know where to begin with this, but that I am really vexed in my spirit, grieved in my spirit, just hurt by church gutter is what I'm going to call it. There's a stench, a gutter stench that is taking place in the church right now. Many of you have been seeing it. It's floating all around over YouTube. It's, it's just mess. It's buffoonery. And I just have to call it for what it is. And it has taken me three days, three days, you know, just to even, just to process this. Like, you know, not that I've been focused on this, not at all. It's, 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 it's too much other things, important things going on in the world than to be focused on this. And this is not why I'm doing this video to get on the bandwagon of all the others that is just, you know, parading around in this pig sty gutter mess. No, this is not what this is for. This video is for to open your eyes, people, to open your eyes to what is going on and what the enemy is trying to do. But I'm going to tell you something. What's done in the dark is being brought to the light. I'm going to say that again. What is done in the dark is being brought to the light. You have many people that are coming against true prophets of God, calling them false prophets. And I'm going to say this again. I said this this morning, and I'll say it again with all truth and boldness. A lot of them would know a false prophet if it slapped them in the face. It is so much deception and so much buffoonery, and it is it's so prevalent. And so obvious what is right versus what is wrong, what is good versus what is evil, what is black versus what is white is so obvious. But yet the true prophets of God is getting persecuted, challenged, taking stabs at. I'm just telling you right now. Sometimes I, I go on, on YouTube and I Google, and I've seen my name months ago where somebody did a video about me being a false prophet, talking about me and the Sabbath day, how I'm, I'm you know, the Lord is going to judge me because I'm uh, basically, I guess, preaching heresy of, of, of uh, telling people that they... Um, don't have to keep the Sabbath. That's not false. That's biblical. And and a lot of people have a veil over them. They haven't come in that revelation. I'm not false. But I don't care what people say. They're gonna say they said that about Jesus Christ. They called him the evil bug. They called him Satan. And the Lord said they're gonna hate you. The world hates you. If I was loved like some of these false apostles, super apostles that now have powers and, and that that's that's the problem. A lot of these people, men and women, not just women, because see I see a lot of people talking about it's just these silly women being led captive and yes, eighty percent of it is it, but there are some men too. They're following these people from the four corners of the regions of the earth and pouring out all their money into these people. But true prophets of God, we're the ones getting persecuted. But they're the ones who are manipulating you. And what I see in all this, this is what I want to alert the body of Christ to, is the witchcraft. The witchery, the witchcraft and the manipulation that is that I saw in it. I, I didn't even want to, but I was just like, what is going on? You know, I don't, I didn't even know who David Taylor was. Vicki Yohi, 
only know her from the one song. I, I'm, I'm, I think it's the only one I know. Uh, the one where she's singing Jehovah Jireh and the, the many names of God, my provider, that song. I can't even think of it right now. But and I'm like Vicky, yo, he what, who, what, what is going on? And she she's on the video crying and 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 I'm just gonna say that the things that she talked about that's going on in the church is real. And I have to admit it because I'm real. I like to be honest for, for telling and telling the truth. It is real. It's what she talked about. I don't even know what she even know. It was manipulation, witchcraft. Somebody being exposed and you telling other people, look, stay away from her. Stay away from her. Don't don't go over there. Nope. And, 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 and if you don't know what's false, somebody parading back and forth, boasting in themselves, talking about how much power they have when the word says, the word of God says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, any power that we have, any power that we have. Is by the power of the living God. Acts 1 8 says, Behold, and ye shall receive power. The Lord is sending the power. What is all this? What is this about we have to, why do we have to read somebody else's book to see Jesus the Christ? I'm going to tell you why. Why people even being led silly and captive into this foolishness. And you 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 got to make a video talking about I did I did I did see Jesus. Do you not know that Paul talked and warned about this stuff? He's so warned about it. But Paul called it super apostles. Some of the the uh, broken down versions call, uh, Paul called it super apostles because they in his days in the church of Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 the church of Corinth they paraded around the super apostles they paraded around like they had so much authority so much power and 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 uh you know more than me you can't get better than me I'm the chiefest and in the King James version of uh 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 5 Paul says for I suppose I was not a wit behind the very chiefest apostles wait a minute what did the lord that god say he said what did jesus say jesus said if anybody consider themselves chiefest among you they ain't i'm paraphrasing this they the servant they are a servant call no man father let no man be chief among you what is this you got to re re reason why you you can see Jesus by your own humility, by your own reading of the Word of God. You got to go grab somebody else's book. Paul talked about that too. He said how uh, um, I think it is it's in Colossians chapter two how they talk about how they see these visions of angels and you know making themselves seem more than who or what they are and some people get caught up in all of that and they get caught up in all that then they go run to it then they run into it then you were making a video talking about you did see jesus and then uh, another video of, of of another leader mocking it's a mockery making the church look bad and and this is my conviction. You know the scripture in uh what is it? Second Thessalonians, I think it is first or second Thessalonians that says in the in the last days they will be falling away, which is apostasy. Let me tell you something. A lot of people see that as and, and this is true, a lot of people are falling away from the church because they have itching ears, they don't want to hear truth of sound doctrine. But there's a, a, a fallen away that is also like this. If, if, if you a babe in Christ and you watching YouTube 
and you want to know Christ, but the only thing you see parading as life is what's being manifested, strung all over YouTube, talking about red bottom shoes, costing $9,400. What? And, 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 and sex and, and, uh, come on, let's tell it, let's tell the truth and shame the devil, tell it like a T.I. is. If it's you, if you saw some of that foolishness, would you sit there, would you run up in that church? No, you would run, Forrest, run. You would, if you wouldn't, you should. I couldn't sit there. I couldn't do it. If that's the closest thing to Jesus and life, you wouldn't want to be a part of that. It's buffoonery. It's that, I, man, I was so grieved in my spirit. I was, I welled up a couple of times in my eyes. I'm like, oh my God, what is this? What is going on? And I know that there's things that are being brought to the light. Look at this. Verse 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 11, I'm going to start there. Wherefore, because I love you not, God know it, but what I do that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, who in shall be according, watch this, to their works. Works, their works. What they gather. And people flocking to the, just every four corner region of the earth following these people. Just giving out all kinds of money. Got to. How they buying other women red bottom shoes. And all these lavish watches and cars and, and things like that. But the real prophets of God. You ain't going to get two dollars. You're not going to get ten cents. You know, in this same chapter, um, I'm going to read it for you. I'm going to start at verse 5 again. For I suppose I was not wit behind the very chiefest apostles. But though I may be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Have I committed an offense, Paul says, in abasing myself, that ye may be exalted, because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? Paul said, I robbed other churches taking wages of them to do you service. But when Paul said that he didn't rob no church, the church of Corinth gave to Paul because of the work of the, what he was doing in the church. But all these men and women, it's, it's the, 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 what I learned in my walk in Christ, in the apostolic faith, is control. It's all about control and power, domination, manipulation. You got domination, manipulation, and intimidation. You got witchcraft. I had people to say, oh, you need to come to this conference because there is going to be a chief prophetess here, and she's going to sit people down say, what? She gonna sit people down. Who called her? Who 
calls them? Nobody gets to sit nobody down. Let no man be chief among you. Now we have super apostles with superpowers and books to see Jesus. And if you don't have this power, you need to go sit down. If you, Because you ain't seen no Jesus. That's what our walking Christ is about. Who can get to the finish line to see Jesus in a vision or a dream? I don't think so. Mm -mm. Let me read something to you. I want to wake some people up on this. This, this, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, Lord Jesus. Oh, my God, y'all. Indonesia is sensitive to get hit again. Okay, let me stay on topic here. Um, let me read something to you. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just totally outdone. If you in... Just listen to this. False apostles are people who masquerade as Christian leaders. They get other people to follow them and then lead them astray. A true apostle is one who is sent by God as an ambassador of Jesus Christ with a divine message. A false apostle is a pretender who does not truly represent Christ and whose message is false. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, the Apostle Paul addresses the problem of false apostles invading the Corinthian church. He describes the false apostles as those who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things they boast about. You hear that? Boasting. The book of 2 Corinthians is one of Paul's more sarcastic letters as he contends with the church to recognize the error that had crept into the midst, he contrasts his selfless service with that of super apostles, verse 5, who were seducing the church with their smooth speech and apparent wisdom. These impostors were pretending to be true servants of Christ, but they did not know the Lord. They were deceivers preying on gullible Christians in the Corinth to profit themselves and boost their ego. Paul kids the church that they even put up with anyone who enslaves you or exploits you or takes advantage of you or puts on air or slaps you in the face. He even compares these imposters to Satan himself who also masquerades as the angel of light, which I already read to you. Paul warned the Ephesian elders about the false apostles as well. He says, I know that after I leave, savage wolves, let me tell you, these wolves and sheep's clothing, the wool is being pulled from over their eyes. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock even from your own number. Men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. Acts 20 and 29. They must have heeded his words because in Revelation chapter 2 verse 2, Jesus commended the church at Ephesus for spotting the false apostles in their midst and what rejecting them see this is what i also notice in the body of christ it is so much witchcraft and intimidation what we have been called to judge judge righteously knowing good from evil i see people when they see something false they get afraid because of the traditions of men have made the word of god of no effect so when you see something that is quacking walking like a duck you can't call it a duck you call it a chicken because you said you scared no if it's false it's false call it what it is it is what it is 
Paul called it out and he called it what it was. You shall know them by their fruit. You shall know them by their fruit. False teachers and false apostles have been plentiful throughout the history of the church. They still infiltrate unsuspecting churches and having, have even led whole denominations into heresy and apostasy. Scripture gives us clear warning if we will pay attention. If the Lord warned us about false Christ and false prophets. Why do we have a problem with calling an apostle or a prophet that is false false? I'm talking about the real ones. I'm sorry. I'm talking about the real false ones. I said it right. The real false prophets. I just got called a false prophet basically uh, yesterday. One of my commenters, because, you know, I did a video on uh, the 144,000. They begin saying, and it is so, I, I say the, the, the Lord is uh, protecting. Uh, his hand is, is definitely on this ministry. But whatever she was going in to say, I went in to see it. It was gone. The comment was gone. I don't know if, I know uh, YouTube has been deleting a lot of spam and a lot of different stuff, but her message was, but, you know, she said that she saw me look like I was, she said, you know, I've been following you for a while, um, but now you're off. You you off. You know, and, and I looked at the video, I'm like, okay, I'm off on what? What, what, I'm 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 off on something. What the the hundred forty four thousand video, you know we I don't know if she's seeing these numbers, but we that are seeing these numbers, we're seeing them for a reason. We're not just seeing these numbers. We are true followers of Christ. We love Christ with all our heart. When we see things, we have to ask the Lord why we're seeing them. There's a reason for it. Why are we all seeing this stuff at one time? All right. You got some real signs and wonders, and you got some lying signs and wonders. Writing a book, so and, and then telling people, if you read this book from beginning to end, somebody else's book, not the good book of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, man, come on. False apostles deny any or all truths about the identity and deity of Jesus Christ. In 1 John chapter 4, 3 through 4, John warns his readers against Gnostic teaching. The test, he says, is Christological. By this, you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus has not come from God. There are many ways a spirit may deny that Jesus is Christ, from demonic cults to denominations that have veered away from the gospel. Evil spirits are always behind the slander of Jesus. Any teacher who attempts to take away from or add to Jesus' finished work on the cross for our salvation is a false prophet. John chapter 19, 30, Acts chapter 4 and 12. False apostles are motivated by their greed, lust, watch this, or power. Power. I just don't know how these people are not afraid to be on video live telling somebody to go sit down. You ain't got no power like I do. Yeah, I got power. I got power. Oh, man, I'm I'm too afraid to be even. I, I don't even want to think it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I can't do it. It says, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 8, describes such teachers in more detail. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. 
People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, having nothing to do, no, have nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janice and, is it, oh boy, Janice and John Brace oppose Moses, so also these teachers oppose the truth. They are men of the prop, the prop minds who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected. Jesus said that an identifying mark of a false apostle or prophet is a sinful behavior. By their fruit, by their fruit you will recognize them. Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 16 and 20, and Jude chapter 1, verse 4. False apostles distort or deny the Bible as God's infallible inspired word. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 through 9, Paul counters legalism with these strong words. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed, as we said before, so say I now again. If many preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. The inspired writings of the apostles are part of the word of God, and no one has a right to change their message. False apostles refuse to make themselves subject to spiritual authority but consider themselves the final authority. How many times have you seen that? They will often adopt lofty sounding titles for themselves, such as, such as bishop, apostle, reverend, or father. This does not, watch, watch this now, this does not mean that every person carrying such titles is a false prophet, only that evil imposters love lofty titles, and will self-title to gain a hearing. False apostles can arise anywhere. The word of God does not reign supreme. From organized churches to home Bible studies, we must always be on guard against new teachings or revelations that are not subject to the whole counsel of God. That is why it has always been my conviction to everything I bring to have this. I tell you all the time, don't come to this channel unless you have your what? Your Bible. Not some mystery of ages book, not some cryptic book, nothing like that. Your Bible, the word of God. Everything, even on down to the numbers that we, we see. I'm bringing the Bible. The Bible. That's what I go to. The Lord himself, the word of God. He wrote a book called Numbers. He inspired a book called Numbers. Super apostles with superpowers. I, I, man, went from being Christian to superheroes with power, making a mockery out of the church is just, we, that's why I do what I do. That's why I stay in the streets and go get the people because if, if, if people are sitting at home watching it on YouTube and after this, and I'm telling you something. If you following these such people, you need to repent. 
I'm just going to tell it. Like I see it, you need to repent. I'm telling you, you need to repent. It's hurtful to be doing people. Like, I mean, how can people... You guys, let me see see if I can tell my little story in a five-minute little synopsis. I've been in the apostolic church, and now let me say this. I love church, okay? But in my walk, I've also experienced, you know, I felt like, you know, I need some training. I need to be, the Lord was like, oh, okay. I, I'm the one that's going to, the Lord is saying, telling me, I'm the one that's going to train you. You need not any man teach you. That's, that's scripture. But no, I had to get up there because I had to have a mentor. I got to have a mentor. I got to, I got to, I got to, got to do this. Y'all, I had a mentor that lived the whole state away from me. All this was done by phone. This particular apostle, I didn't find him. My spiritual mom referred him to me because I was dealing with some problems in my marriage, okay? Long story short, I left my husband, moved away, needed a car. He coerced me into get in a car and at this time i had been knowing him for like a year and like two years okay and he was like well don't do that don't go buy a car you should get one on um by auction so i called up my uh, cousin and asked him about it was like yeah people do it all the time but you just have to be careful you know so i got eighteen hundred dollars long story short i gave a cent that he told me to send wire eighteen hundred dollars yes it was dumb wired eighteen hundred dollars the my vehicle that i wanted was supposed to be coming to me if i got that vehicle you got it i didn't see the vehicle nor my eighteen hundred dollars watch this i went into a church that of another prophetess that had this, this 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 particular woman had the same calling I did, and I was uh, told by my mentor not to do what she said because I was in training by him, which he wasn't here now, but he would report. I had to report in on the phone and things of that nature. Okay, so anyway, long story short, things happened on the phone words back and forth because i need my money man i'm a single mama you know and here come the manipulation you disrespecting me how i'm disrespecting you and i'm asking you for my money back no no you you out of line how am i out of line and you got eighteen hundred dollars of my money But that was the manipulation, the domination, the intimidation. No, I'm, 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 you don't talk to me like that. Talk to you like what? I'm asking you for my money. See, that was the mind game. And because I recognized it, I called it out. Then you hang up the phone. You don't even want to talk no more. Now, I may did something dumb, but I wasn't crazy. I know when I'm being manipulated and, and somebody done stole my money, but long story short, she knew an attorney that was supposed to get my money back. Y'all remember that? Uh, she knew him firsthand. Like she say, I didn't know him. She, she chose this man. She had supposedly did business with him. This is my, was my pastor at this time. I send this man about $3,500 to get everything straight to get my $1,800 back or my vehicle. That particular bishop stole my money too. Watch this. He wasn't even an attorney. Yeah. Yeah. But she told me 
he stole my $1,800 because I didn't have good discernment. And that this bishop that she knew, she said she had good discernment, and the bishop that she knew, she dealt with, and he would never do me like that. I found out on my own that he wasn't a real attorney. Yeah, later, after my money was gone. But why? What is the problem at? Because I trusted what she said. Because she was my pastor at that time. See, that's what I'm saying. That's how we get caught up. So I know all about the control in the apostolic church. I'm not bashing it. I'm not coming against it. This ain't nothing. I'm telling you my experience. My experience is my experience. I'm just saying I can relate to that. And that, that that's the pattern that can see. All apostolic churches are not like that. I know it's got to be some good ones out of it out there. Harvest Storm is one of them. There's one I do know, but here in Shreveport, Louisiana, uh uh-uh, uh, nope. I ain't found one. Not yet. Mm mm. It's all about apostate control. Control, domination. I've got more power than you. But this is what I want y'all to see. I don't want y'all to focus on all that negative stuff. Did that turn me away from the Lord? No. No. Because at the end of the day, we have Christ in us. Yes, we are not to forsake the assembly of the ecclesia, which is the the church, yeah, but don't forget that also the church is in you, and if something is corrupt, it's corrupt. The scripture that says a little leaven is the leaven at the whole lump. You can't. It, 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 how are you gonna be a part of something, and the, and it's the, the head is messed up. You can't. You can't be a part of something that's jacked up. That's why the Lord is cleaning out, chipping up, exposing things right now. I just want people's eyes to be open to what is really going on, knowing good from evil, being able to do right sound judgment. Knowing good from evil, right from wrong, what's real, what's not real. You shall know them by their fruit. Nobody's perfect, and that doesn't say that we all don't sin. We all sin. But there is some blatantness, some boldness in the false prophets, in the in the false super apostles, must I say. I'm saying super because all these, the stuff I've been hearing uh, uh, on YouTube about there was an apostle with blue eyes and everybody, oh, he he the one and, and, and he, him, him calling himself Jesus and, and people levitating and oh, oh, no, 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 no. That's too much. That's too much for me. I just stick with this. Thank you. That's all I need. Thanks. That's it. I don't need all that. I don't need to read somebody else's book to see Jesus. Because, see, obviously, it's something in that book, and I don't think they're saying no Jesus. Mm -hmm. Everybody's flocking and spending all this money. To see Jesus, to read the end of the book, to see, read the good book. See, we we spend too much time following after things that is so wrong that we can't see right in front of us. That's good, right there. That's good.
Look at this. L listen to this. Let this is coming out of Second Corinthians chapter ten, verses um, eleven. Let such an one think this that such as we are in word by letters, then we are absent. Such will we be also indeed when we are present. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Show ain't. Mm -mm. Anybody can stand up and just march around talking about I got power. I got power. You ain't got no power. Go sit down. What? Mm -mm. Y'all stay close to Jesus. Oh, my father, stay close to Jesus. Ugh. I've always been told, I've always read, I've always seen a true prophet of the living God is going to lead you to the good book, which is the Holy Bible, and is going to always point you to Jesus the Christ, a true prophet. It's going to always have a heart for the people, meaning their salvation, a heart for truth, a heart for the, the Lord Jesus, and a heart for his word in leading you to the book of the Holy Bible, not to their book to lead you astray in looking for Jesus in something else. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The Bible says, search the scriptures for they testify of me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all your righteousness. Okay, and all his righteousness. Then the Bible also says, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I think, I know, that if we diligently, you want to see the Lord, however, if you look for him, you will find him in this word. Okay? If you, you people... <laughs> Oh, boy, I think it's in Colossians. Paul said it in uh, Colossians 2 and 18. Where is it? Where is it? Real quick. No, is it 2 18? Yeah. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he had not vainly puffed up by his fleshy fleshly mind and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increasing with the increase of God basically I mean if you really if you read Colossians chapter 2 in like the amplified version boy it'll make it Paul was calling it out he called it what it was. Y'all pray. Fast, pray, stay close to the Lord. If you've been following such people, oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every listener, Lord. Let us not be deceived, Lord. You said it all throughout your word. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Father, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over their hearts and their minds. Lord, reveal, unveil any covering over their hearts, any covering over their eyes, any scales over their eyes. Lord, remove any dull hearing. Lord, let the blood of Jesus be against, be against any deception, any wiles of the enemy that will come against this camp that is lifted listening under the sound of my voice. I bind it and rebuke it in Jesus' name. Lord God, give them strength, for you are the saving strength of the anointed. Father, give them 
strength, Lord, give them the power that you would give them, Lord God, to tread up over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Lord God, give them the power to tread up over the lion and adder. The lion and adder, they will trample under feet. Lord, in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Ghost, reveal any deception, Lord, in their life, Lord God. If they're following anything, Lord God, that is not of you, Father, awaken them to righteousness in Jesus' name. Let them not be deceived. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. I I just can't, y'all, I, oh. Uh, I just had to say something. It just, it just bothers me. When I see somebody being mistreated or misused or abused or just just blatantly lied to in witchcraft, and it's just, oh, I, can't, oh, I, I just get vexed in my spirit. It's just, oh, it makes me want to cry. It's horrible. It's just horrible. I love you guys. See you next video. Thanks.